Speaking of college football, Nicole Arbach just a few minutes ago had this nugget today about, well, the uh, news is that ESPN and the college football playoff are in agreement on a six-year, seven, nearly eight billion dollar rights extension college football still needs to resolve the outstanding issues they have for 2026 and beyond and there we are with the revenue distribution about how that goes down but there were thoughts that you meet you know the fox was going to get involved but apparently that is not the case and espn will be in charge of running not the decision making although some people can make a joke about that when it comes to who does decide that but the playoff will remain appears on ESPN and ABC. I, I just don't I don't like Smokey. I know that you agree with this. I'm I'm assuming Craig does as well. I don't like the idea that one entity gets to control everything. It bothers me a lot. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a big fan of Teddy Roosevelt, who broke up, broke up trusts and monopolies back at the turn of the 20th century. And I, I don't like companies getting so big that like they're like, well, what are you gonna do about it? You know, you have to suckle at our teat for all this information and all this, all this content. So we're going to keep getting bigger and bigger and there's nothing you can do to stop us. And just for variety's sake, I would like, you know, admittedly another gigantic conglomerate to get involved, but I just think like the NFL, look, part of the reason I think that the NFL television broadcast is so good as you have four entities all trying to outdo each other, right? They're all trying to make sure that they're the best at it. And college football has the same thing now with CBS and NBC and Fox, ESPN, ABC, like all these people, the CW, for God's sakes, all these people are involved. To me, I think you should have at least one or two more of those involved when it comes to the 12 team play. I brought this up, Craig, about ESPN and a lot of people upset. It was down to the four teams and that they might even have an influence based on their shows or whatever. Fox has their shows, but ESPN carries the games. I have never heard, not once have I ever heard anyone pointing the finger at CBS or even ESPN's college game day for influencing who makes the NCAA men's basketball tournament, although there are 68 teams compared to what has been four. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just two entirely separate things. Um, you can win your conference championship in basketball and pretty much every any conference and you make the tournament. No? Yeah. You might win your power conference in football and not make the tournament. So that's a pretty heavy difference right it's a huge there. Huge difference. I mean, yeah. so that that's for starters. Um yeah, as far as this goes, uh, I think it's interesting. I also think it's completely unfinished and there's not a final, you know, period to put on this sentence. It's a lot of this is what it looks like right now, but in a follow up tweet by Nicole Auerbach, it says that ESPN's open to sub licensing their games. So that's a situation where when it comes down to how this all actually works, why doesn't Fox get involved or why doesn't CBS get involved? Well, technically, I suppose that they could uh, sub-license games based on a follow-up tweet uh, from Nicole Auerbach. And I don't know, guys. I, I think, you know, it's it's interesting to look at that first part of that tweet. Um, ESPN and college football playoff are in agreement on a six-year $7.8 billion rights extension. But then what does it say after that? CFP still needs to resolve its outstanding issues. Yep. Those are kind of a few big issues, <laughs> like the whole revenue distribution, and we're going to get to Ross Dellinger's article. That's a massive part of the article is the revenue distribution and the fact that the SEC and the Big Ten seem to feel like they deserve more of the football money. And it points out with the SEC in particular, they've had 40% of the participation, but they make the same amount as you know most every other conference makes, save the years that they get two teams in versus – teams that get one, but when they get one in, they'd make the same amount, even though over the course of time, they've had nearly half the field all to themselves. So, um, yeah, I just, I think, uh, this is interesting. I think it's surprising to see that more networks aren't involved, but I also feel like this is a long way from being resolved entirely. So when all is said and done, uh, that maybe this is a bit more spread out. Maybe there is sub licensing, I, I don't like it all being under the control of the ESPN umbrella because I don't trust them. I don't think that they're necessarily always doing what's right for the sport. I think they're doing what most people do and looking out for themselves and their best business interest. And um, I think that when it comes to the college football playoff, uh, yeah, they want to have every piece of the pie that they can. But I think everybody, even ESPN, would probably like to have it spread out a little bit. But if you can have control of it and then still get money for it, but then leave it up to the broadcasting for other people, mm -hmm. that would work out 
for you in the, in the long run the best. So maybe that's what they're hoping for. Um, and who knows what the conversations were like as far as the money figures being thrown around and what networks were offering what. We had an article, what was it, like a month ago? It was talking about the difficulty in trying to get more people involved. I mean, well, the price points weren't where they wanted them to be, if I remember correctly. And so re recalling that, yeah, it's not all that surprising that, that not everybody's jumped into the pool because the price isn't maybe where they want it to be. So uh, interesting uh, that they're closing in on this, but... That, that part about the still need to resolve its outstanding issues for 2026 and beyond, we're set the next two years, boys. Like, there's going to be conversations, but we know the feel. We know it's 12 teams. We know the format. We know everything involved in how that's going to go other than just how it's going to look when the committee is deciding on those teams. But beyond 25, nobody knows what the hell's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, the playoff well, format's not set. No, it's not, but the money's going to be there, right? Oh, I mean, it of just course but yeah, I get you the five seven six six format. They still don't have that result. Well, they don't have that. They don't have the revenue distribution. Right. They don't have the governance or the access, as she mentions in that part of the tweet. So that's a lot of. Oh yeah, by the way, there's this also to figure out. So yeah, I mean that's a that's a headline that's pretty eye catching. But in reality, there are so many layers to this whole thing that this is not like a boom, it's done, and let's wrap it up and move on. It's a long way from that in my mind. Well, Bob Thompson weighed in. Seems light to me. Uh, let's say the first four games next season, uh, the four first round games are like fifteen million dollars each, or sixty million. Add that to year eleven of the current deal on the reported six hundred eighty-five million average deal, and you're at around eight hundred ninety-five million in year eleven, nine hundred thirty-five million in year twelve. Discount the one point three billion average in the new six-year deal back to year one, and you're at one point one six billion. So an increase of only 25% appears to be coming from the last year of the stale 12-year deal to one year one of the new deal. Maybe no other bidders, which, again, you could sub-license and do what you want with that. But that's just Bob Thompson who kind of understands the business. We've had him many times. But is there a possibility that everybody just said we don't want to be a part of that? And because the money, although it's there, is not maybe there. Because there were thoughts. I remember reading an article that there was the possibility that they could get $2 billion for the next college football playoff television deal. And this one here uh, appears to be uh, light of that, like about 65 or 70% of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's uh, maybe the sports rights bubble is not as uh, big and and – with as much room to grow as it appeared like it was last summer, even though that was starting to kind of be a period where obviously with the Pac-12's television rights issues, you could see how that was starting to wind down. Uh, there's still major leagues that are like the NBA in discussions right now on what they're going to do. So, yeah, I, I don't know what that means exactly. It does seem a little light. And maybe just not everybody's all in on being a part of like a couple first-round games, that if you're going to take a bite out of the apple, you want the whole thing or – or not just a couple of bites of it. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what is in the mind of those network execs. Maybe they're waiting for it to play out a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the, the, the angle is there, but it does seem like there's a lot of big talk about how crazy the, the numbers would be. And, and to hear Bob Thompson say, well, that's a little light. Well, he yeah, actually said, what was it at the beginning? He said, that's about a 25% a, a increase, not what you would think could be 75 to 100%. Well, yeah. maybe people were just being unrealistic with 75 to 100% because they're adding a mm -hmm. few more teams, and it's not like you're adding necessarily Alabama, Michigan in every one of those games that's going to get 10 million viewers. You're going to get Tulane versus North Carolina, and, and maybe those, those aren't the games that you want. Because I remember in one of the articles a couple months ago, and maybe it was one of the same ones I'm, I'm referencing earlier, um, but I don't think everybody's just gaga over just having games to have games or just having games, period, and, and not minding whatsoever who are a part of those games. So, um, yeah, maybe the, the first round wasn't garnering as much interest, those extra games that you would have. Not sure. I'm sure we'll get more light shed on it. I mean, $7.8 billion over a billion a year for six years. $1.3 billion on is average. Pretty, yeah. pretty great. But, again, um, you see Andrew Marshan chiming in on it and – referencing other reporters and what is also said in his tweet. This is all pending the CFP resolving all of its outstanding issues. So again, 
that's what it all comes down to. Um, it really, the, the big picture is, is what do they do about what's going on beyond the next couple of years? Because I think if you got it locked in and then everything was set and sorted out, then maybe you'd have more players pony up to the table knowing what they're offering, right? But do you even know that the SEC is in the playoff past the next couple of years? I mean, do you, like, you, you think that, you figure yeah. that, but do you know that? Like when it opens up, or or do you have the big breakaway? Because that's the thing is like, what are you bidding on? You don't even know what it looks like in two years. So that's that's maybe where some of them are coming from. That's all I can figure. And, and we're going to get into that with Ross Dellinger's uh, yeah. article in a minute. Yeah, I would have that fear because again, they're they're the ones who have this working group together. And what if at the end of it, they they, they have th- here's the three best proposals. These two include everyone else, and this one is just us. And then because there's no one else in that room saying like. Hey, uh, what about the ACC and the Big Twelve? They'll be like, you know what? Those guys are nerds. We don't, we don't need them. Oh yeah, what about them? And yeah. We, again, we're gonna have some quotes on uh, some of what was said. Great article today by a, a go-to guest that we've had many times in Ross Dellinger. Well, and I think that it, that's why it concerns me. I think you need to have not too many voices in the room, but voices in the room from different perspectives. In that, that way you can stand up. Like, look, if you were trying to pass a bill in Congress about roads and then all the people in the room didn't think you needed to do it and there's potholes all over the place, you wouldn't get a bill passed, would you? You need somebody in the room that says, hey, there's potholes all over these roads. Every state. Like, let's make sure that we we fill the potholes because potholes suck. And then somebody in that room goes, yeah, there's a pothole on my way to work. Yeah, that's good. We should fill the potholes. I didn't think about that. But if you don't, then you're just going to have people going, ah, uh, move on. Kelly, uh, in a response to uh, Bob Thompson, Fox already receiving a cut from the recently announced streaming agreement. NBC more interested in getting the NBA contract, which is going to yeah. be huge. That only leaves CBS. CBS, of course, has the men's basketball tournament and a lot of money that's tied up in that. Yeah, and CBS is, I mean, not all the way, but pretty much out of college football, right? I mean, uh, is there no, the Big Ten? The Big Ten, okay. Yeah, no, no, I was thinking, from the I was thinking SEC, of yeah. uh, the SEC. League. Yeah, so they got the Big Ten. That's right. They got a slice of that, and then I think they've got some HBCU uh, action as well, I believe. But uh, yeah, I mean, the streaming service thing last week being announced. I wonder if that plays into it, uh, as the texter points out, and just what that's going to to look like, and how that maybe changes the minds of some and. I uh, just mentioned a few minutes ago, yeah, the, the NBA rights are out there. Uh, you just had the WWE rights that got wrapped up, uh, so that's not affecting anything. Just in case you know anybody was saving some change to the side for, for those, that's now done and, and uh, over with, and some of those networks are involved. So, yeah, the NBA is the, the big darling out there right now for sports media rights, so I could see somebody uh, focusing in on, on that. Uh, instead but uh, yeah I think the streaming part of it and that whole alliance of networks still a lot of details to figure out of how all that's going to work and the pricing and again this is like the the announcement that we're talking about right now there's a lot of the actual big pieces of information that are important that we don't know anything about yet but I could see where the streaming component comes into play and and maybe that doesn't make it as appetizing or, or doesn't make you want to you know go all in as much as you you maybe would in, in different circumstances all right so there